Noye Nui takes out Stephen Fulton in the eighth round. Man, man, that was explosive. Bro, this guy's good. This guy's good. This guy is the goods. He answered a lot of questions. I'm Pauly Malinaji. This is Pauly TV. Let's break this down. So going into the fight, I'm sure a lot of different opinions. Uh, I think overall Inui was, you know, the overall favorite in most people's minds. Um, but there was always a question mark of how good was Fulton going to be in this fight. As I said before the fight, there are guys that I've been impressed with. And then they get in the ring with Inui and he absolutely demolishes them. Like Emmanuel Rodriguez had been one of them. Uh, Nonito had been really impressive in the first fight. But in the second fight, he just didn't have anything left with which to, you know, bother Inouye. And uh, I was wondering if, as Inouye keeps getting better and better, what Fulton was going to be able to do. Because again, on paper, this was another guy that you're saying, hmm, I'm impressed with this opponent. Let's see if he's able to test the limits of Inouye. Let's see if he's able to make us see a ceiling for Inouye. Or if he blows right through that ceiling and we've got to continue to see him against even better opposition in order to know just how good he can go, just how good he can be and how how high he can go. Well, this is one of those fights where, you know what, he was clearly head and shoulders above uh, Fulton. Fulton was a, a good fighter, and, and in some spots, you know, he he shows some of that craftiness. But ultimately, you know, he's just, you know, he's just too explosive, too fast. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, those Philly fighters, they're tough, man. They're they're willing to get in there shoulder to shoulder and work and, 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 and hang tough. But I know it's... A lot of them are are, are are a little slower on on getting off on the front foot. You know what I mean? On getting off on getting off on the on the attack, not so much on the front foot, but getting off on the attack. Fulton is, is quick on his defensive footwork, but his attacking footwork is a lot of times a little bit slow. And I think that I, I I'm just saying I think that comes maybe from a lot of the gym wars in Philadelphia where they're not used to having to find each other because every Philadelphia fighter has that machismo to where you know they just find each other a center ring and they just you know they'll go at it even, even tactically, even even in the trenches or tactically. There's not a lot of running in Philadelphia gyms, you know? So when you got a guy, and I'm not saying Inouye was running, but Inouye is able to have that fast footwork out, in, out, in. It seemed like Fulton was just too slow trying to close the gap. And every time he was trying to close that gap, it was like Inouye was quicker to get out and then he'd fly back in and he would just surprise Fulton and he was catching him with, with hard, hard shots. You know, it's funny because the knockout that ended up coming was uh, what, what uh, uh, me and uh, one of my old trainers used to work on uh, a combination called a roof. We used to call it a rooftop where it's, it's uh, you jab to the stomach and you throw the right hand to the head. So it's basically a one-two. It's thrown with a one-two speed, but you're not throwing the one-two in the same place. You're throwing the one at the chest. Their stomach and the right and the right and the two to the head and it's got to come like that real real quick you know so and um, I had noticed and know he tried it once or twice during the fight and 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 Fulton had his guard up in a, in a good position and kind of was able to you know let the right hand kind of whiz by or or partially take it but not it wasn't getting through the same way but when the knockout finally came you could see it was and we had been broken down I um, mean you know, uh, Fulton had been broken down and I knew he had sort of started to make him worry about other things you know as the fight wore on I knew he was starting to get off more shots uh more creative punches and so now Fulton has to worry about so many other things that he I think he sort of forgot about being alert to that combination and they caught him real real clean man and then again the the footwork is his feet are so fast before the referee could even jump in I mean you know he's throwing a, a left hook <clears throat> People might say, oh, the glove had touched. That counts. That shouldn't be a knockdown because, you know what, he hit him technically when he was down. But again, in that moment, the glove touched so barely that the fighter can't really can't really tell you know you're in you're in killer mode in that moment so it's like you know you don't you can't really tell for sure if the glove touched the ground uh for 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 Fulton um looking back I, I think it did but uh, so I think the referee should have been able to jump in between Inouye before he landed that last hook but nonetheless Inouye can't be held responsible for it because it's like you don't see it in that moment it's just like it's a bang bang sh situation you know and uh the referee was out of position he was behind Inouye and definitely wasn't as fast footed as Inouye because Inouye closed that gap quickly to land that last left hook uh, that caused the initial knockdown, and then um, you know once he got up, it was elementary. After that, he just trapped him and and finished the fight with a with a blazing combination against the in the corner. You know, you give Fulton some credit though. You know, he hung tough. Um, he was thinking, he was trying to get through the whole way. One thing, one criticism I have for Fulton is you're a tactical fighter. Through that, through those tactics, at times he was landing a couple of straight right hands, a couple of jabs. You got to mix in some feints in there. You know, if you're going to fight in a tactical fashion, you got you can't fight tactically and then not use feints. Because when you land a couple of sharp shots, like a right hand or, or a jab, 
your feints become more deadly. You know what I mean? If you're not landing, okay. You know, at a certain point, yeah, okay. He was in retreat mode. He was getting defensive and he was taking over the fight. But there were moments as the fight was picking up, even if it knew he was doing better, that Fulton was landing right hands. He was, land was landing jabs, landing a couple of shots where you just have to use the feints in between those shots to really make it more effective and possibly slow the pressure of Inouye because you don't want to keep letting Inouye grow in confidence and that's what ended up happening you know uh, they know he had a certain point he wasn't really respecting the power of Fulton but you know you still don't want to just take a shot in the face so if you're if you're still going to be sort of hesitant if you if you kind of if you're kept guessing with some feints you know what I'm saying like you don't have to the guy doesn't have to be hitting you hard but if, if at a certain point Fulton every time he was looking to throw a shot Inouye kind of could realize it because there's no feints in there. If you drop some feints in there, now you're going to make Inouye kind of budge or kind of hesitate just for a split second and you can kind of gain the angle on him. I don't even know if it, you know, if I'm verbalizing it in a way where people are going to understand it, but I just, it was it was something that I would have liked Fulton to see Fulton do because Fulton is a, a, a good tactical fighter and I think the feints in there would have at least helped him his cause somewhat. I don't think it would have won him the fight, but it would have maybe, you know, allowed him some some safety spots in between to where he could change momentum in little spots and maybe he ends up going the distance in the fight instead, you know. But ultimately, a, a very, very impressive performance by Inui. Um I don't even know where, 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 where do you go from here? I mean, they got, they brought this guy in the ring. I was in Tapales or something. I've never seen him fight, but uh, they brought him in the ring. I think Brandon Figueroa was still viable for Inouye. I mean, I, that would be an interesting, interesting fight because Figueroa's style is kind of a molar style. I would wonder how that would play out with a, with a guy like Inouye who has that, the fast feet and the, and the sharp punches. I mean, obviously, I think at this point, after this kind of performance against Fulton, who it was by and large looked at as the, the best guy at the, at the weight class that Inouye was coming to, you know, he was able to absolutely dominate him. I know he was able to dominate him. Yes, some people might say Brandon might have deserved the decision against Fulton, but it was still competitive. It was still a, a, a back and forth fight. You know, it was a good fight. Uh, this fight was a pretty dominant performance by Inouye. Yeah, Fulton showed some class in there, but ultimately, I mean, it was just he, it, Inouye dominated in the end and, and, and got the, uh, a real devastating stoppage. I mean, he's he's explosive, man. Punch and power, fast feet, uh, just getting off on that. That, that. that initial step when he closes that gap, man. And his timing, his sense of distance is just really, really, really impressive. I mean, he was the shorter guy, but yet he was getting in those pump jabs that were just really really had some weight on them you know he was able to time them real perfectly and really was was, was doing well with that too also i want to say um it's not often that you go to a hometown or home country of another fighter and you you get beat and then leave the ring with cheers and 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 and, and people clapping for you usually when you go to a home country of guys a lot of time not usually but a lot of times you end up dealing with uh, 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 a lot of uh, rowdy fans, especially when you got beat. They like to really rub it in um, uh, when you're in the the opposing uh, fighter's country. But uh, the Japanese fans were uh, giving Fulton a round of applause and, 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 and clapping for him as he was leaving the ring. And I hope that uh, at least, you know, you know, I will feel better about losing, but I hope it alleviated things just a little bit for him. You know, uh, he's still a good fighter, and I think... Uh, you know, if he if he if he doesn't lose a lot of confidence in a loss like this, I think he's still got a, a bright future. Maybe a featherweight, because I think that was the plan for for Fulton anyway. For Inouye though, again, we do you know I, I mentioned uh, I like to see him figure out. Oh, maybe this guy Top Alice is was what they're talking about now. He is an absolute megastar in Japan. It looks like, and his star is only going to continue to rise. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they can sort of translate that here coming to the U.S. I don't know how many weight classes he can go up. Again, I don't really believe in continuing to let guys go up too many weight classes because you start to risk them and they can uh, get hurt at a certain point. But, you know, we're in a weird era where, you know, you know what I think about that. And uh, <laughs> it is it is what it is. But I think uh, ultimately it's a very important impressive performance by Inui. And I think he answered a lot of whatever questions might have been brought up or at least whatever initial questions were thought to be brought up in a, by an opponent the caliber of Fulton who is a very good fighter a dominant performance yet again so as I said before this is a, a situation where you were looking to see if this was going to be a new ceiling against a guy like this where even maybe if he beat him if it was going to be competitive you were going to say okay I, I don't know if he can go much 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 higher than this in terms of quality and weight but man, he dominated. So we still have not seen the ceiling for Naoya Inouye. And he's one of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Let me know what you think of his performance. Let me know what you think of him as a fighter. Can he become the number one pound for pound fighter in the world? Who knows? I mean, the ESPN guys were, were, were making like he was... 
He, uh, I think, I think Tim was, uh, no, not Tim. Uh, Kriegel was saying that, uh, um, you know, you got to look at him as a top pound for pound guy. Well, Tim was saying, you know, we still got to watch on Saturday night between Spence and Crawford. I agree with Tim. You know, I think you still have to see how Spence and Crawford plays out. And also, you can't overlook Alexander Usyk just because Tyson Fury didn't fight him. Usyk has done a tremendous job in his own right in uh, earning his spot on the pound for pound list. So, so a lot of a lot of questions, uh, a lot of to discuss. Uh, in a big, big fight week where we're still not done yet, uh, ESPN has uh, Sinisa Estrada coming up on Friday night. She was one of the most, one of the most talented pound for pound female fighters in the world. And then, of course, the big one is uh, Saturday night with uh, Spence and Crawford. So let let me know what your what your thoughts are, guys. Uh, let me know uh, well, who's your number one pound for pound. Does this affect your pound for pound list with it, with Inouye dismantling Fulton this way? You know, uh, where does Fulton go from here? Uh, and uh, who do you guys want to see in Nui fight? Personally, I want to see him against Figueroa, but I don't know a lot about Top of List. Maybe you guys know a little bit about him. So let me know. Uh, let me know what your comments and thoughts. And I'll talk to you guys later. This is Paulie Malinaji for Paulie TV.